Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Miss Quids again. In this video I'm going to be talking about citations in LaTeX, in particular using BibTeX. So there are ways of doing citations in LaTeX that involve actually having the bibliography as part of the tech document. Now in this video I'm not going to be doing that, I'm going to be using BibTeX which involves creating a separate bib file and referencing that in our tech document. And the reason why I've chosen this is because it tends to be used more often and also that's what I tend to use in my own work and it works well for me. So I've created a little test tech document called citations.tech and I've got a little paragraph and I'm going to cite an article, a book and a website and I'm going to have, I want to put the citation after each of these words. So I want to say I'm going to reference an article and then put the citation here, the book citation after the word book and the website citation after the word website. So as I said, we have a separate bibliography file and at the moment mine is empty. So rather than going through and choosing the particular articles etc to cite. I'm just going to pull an example off the internet and then I'll explain what the various components of the citation are. So first I'm going to use this website which has a nice example of an article and a book. So let's just copy this article and I've just fixed the spacing a little bit so it looks a bit more clear. So if we're citing an article all of the entries in the bibliography file start with the at sign and then there's a word that describes what the exact thing you're referencing is and there are a set of these. So article is for articles and then you have a keyword that refers to this specific entry when you're actually doing the citation in the LaTeX file and then you have the various components and these are like keyword equals and then the reason why they're put in brackets you can use double quotes but I think the reason why brackets tend to be commonly used is because when you have things like the title, using these curly braces allows us to keep the capitalization that we've started with. So we have an author, a title, a journal, and then the volume, number, a year, and pages. You can also have an issue number, and yeah, I think that's it. So We've included this in library.bib and now when we go back to citations.tech wherever we want to cite this we would do backslash cite and then in curly braces the name of the thing we want to reference. So you can see that the way they've named this is by putting the initials of the each of the three authors surnames together and then the year of publication. An alternative to this, which I tend to do, is to take the first author, use their surname, and then put the year of publication. So I'd write this as Arrow 1961. But of course, you know, it's completely up to you, whatever, whatever you want to do. But how are we going to tell LaTeX where the citation is? Because these are in two different files. And so at the end of the document, before the actual end document, we need to put a couple of commands. The first is bibliography style, and I've used unsorted, which means that the references are going to appear in the same order that it's referenced in this document. And then backslash bibliography, and then library. You don't need the dot bib. As long as it's in the same folder, this is fine. And so let's compile it and this time I'm going to have to show the compilation process because it's a bit different. And now I've opened a console window up and in order to compile all of this, the first thing we need to do is run LaTeX and then the name of the tech file as we always do. And then the next thing we need to do is bibtech and then the name of the tech file but without .tech on the end. And then we need to run latex citations.tech twice again. And the reason why we do this twice is just in case some kind of page numbering is mucked up. Anyway, let's have a look at what this has given us. And so here it's numbered the first citation and then we have the citation in this format. Of course, changing the bibliography style will give you a different kind of format to your references, but this is the one that I tend to use. And now I will show a couple of examples for a book and a website. 
Now this book example is taken off the same website as before, but the website example I have taken from this tech stack exchange website because it was not on the original website I was using. But basically, as it says, we need to use this miscellaneous entry. And then we can use the site command as we did before. And if we compile this all again, and now we can see after running latex citations.tech again, we have got some LaTeX warnings that the citations are undefined because it hasn't yet compiled the bib file. The reason why we didn't get those warnings the first time I did this was because I was um, testing, testing the file before I started recording. And then I did bib tech and then LaTeX twice as before. Now let's look at the output. And as you can see, the book and the website have appeared in the order that we've referenced them. And you can also see that the URL has gone off the page. The way that we can fix this is by importing a package that will do this wrapping automatically. And in order to get this to work, I have had to put use package URL at the top, and this will recognize that it is a URL and will do the automatic wrapping, as we can see here. So these are the main kind of things you might like to reference, an article, a book, and a website. I'll link to the web pages I use to get the examples in the description. And the last thing I want to cover is what if you want to include in your references list references that you're not actually using the site command to reference in your document. Now you might do this if you just want to say, a reading list or some kind of like bibliography that isn't necessarily going to be completely dependent on what is in the document. So I'll show you how to deal with that. So I've taken out the citation to the article. And as you can see, when I compile it, this will not appear in the PDF anymore. And as you can see, it's disappeared. So how are we going to put this into the references list again? Well, for this, we can use no site. And the way we do this is somewhere between begin and end document, we do no site and then in brackets, the list of things that we want to include in the bibliography, but not be uh, cited with the site command. I've done no site ahu61. And now this appears in the references. So in this video, I talked about referencing in LaTeX including different types of references you can include, how to use BibTeX, and also what to do if you want something in your references list which you're not actually citing explicitly in your document. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all later.